Fish keeping is a very rewarding hobby, but it does have its ups and downs. And one of the most common reasons people quit is because of a traumatic experience with fish death. Now we try to be good fish parents, but sometimes fish die, regardless of how dedicated and knowledgeable you are. And sometimes it is because of our lack of knowledge that they die. In this video, we'll discuss 10 common reasons why fish die. And at the end, I'll give you three commonly overlooked reasons why we lose our fish. One of the biggest killers of fish is stress. So you have to know what to look for to see if your fish are stressed, because they're not gonna tell you. I'll never tell. But your fish will usually give you signs that they're stressed. And this can include glass surfing, where they go up and down the glass constantly, or flashing, where they dart at the sand to scratch their sides. It may be hiding or gasping, could be weight loss, abnormal behavior. There are a lot of signs that your fish are stressed. And what stress does is it weakens the immune system, which makes them more susceptible to illnesses, which can then kill your fish. And it's your job to find out which of these possible reasons pertain to your fish. Now, I'm not even including stress as one of the reasons for fish death, but stress is the underlying reason for almost all of the following. Not cycling your tank before adding fish will kill them. If you don't know what the nitrogen cycle is, then you need to know about it. And there are a lot of videos on YouTube to help you understand it. But in a nutshell, your tank needs to have beneficial bacteria in it before adding fish. This bacteria is going to turn lethal ammonia into nitrites, and then you'll grow bacteria that will turn nitrites into nitrates, which are much less harmful, but still not good for your fish. Those are removed by water changes or plants if you have a planted tank. Well, both actually. New fish keepers will want to hurry up and get fish into the brand new tank, unaware that they are probably sentencing them to death because the tank isn't properly cycled. When a tank is cycled, this means there's enough beneficial bacteria to keep the tank zero ammonia and zero nitrites. To cycle your tank and ensure you have this bacteria, add some ammonia, which you can get from aquarium co-op, or add food that will decompose and turn into ammonia. This will help you to grow the bacteria you need. Then add some bacteria in a bottle. I use Seachem Stability. Don't do any water changes while you're doing this process. You can also add seasoned media from an established tank and put it in a filter or near a lot of water movement. Since this media already has all the bacteria on it you need, this will cycle your tank immediately. If you already have fish in your tank and you just realize that your tank isn't cycled, or if you're having an ammonia spike, don't do water changes as this will reduce the amount of ammonia in the tank. Well, right now you need that ammonia to feed the bacteria, but ammonia kills fish, right? Yes. So add the proper dosage of Seachem Prime to detoxify the ammonia every 24 hours until your tank is cycled. Also continue to add your stability. Then do your first water change at around 40 parts per million nitrates. Another thing about the nitrogen cycle is that you're only going to have enough beneficial bacteria in your aquarium to support the amount of ammonia that you've been putting in the aquarium while you were cycling it or to support the amount of ammonia that your fish are producing that are currently inside the tank. So if you have 10 fish in your tank, you have enough beneficial bacteria for those 10 fish. Add 10 more and you have a problem. The best thing to do is add small amounts of fish at a time. I usually add about five smaller ones, but then you can also give the beneficial bacteria a boost by adding some bacteria in a bottle at the same time. When you bring fish home, you have to quarantine them because they may already have a disease and you don't want to spread it to all of your other fish. The fish you brought home may look completely healthy, but remember that they could possibly show their first signs of illness several weeks after you brought them home. Put them in a quarantine tank. It's usually a smaller tank, about 10 gallons or so, all by themselves for 30 days. This tank needs to be cycled as well. And the easiest way to do this is to take an extra active sponge filter from another established tank and put it in your quarantine tank. Your quarantine tank will now be instantly cycled. I've also stolen some filter media from another filter and put it in a mesh baggie and then added that to the quarantine tank and it worked as well. If they show symptoms during that 30 day quarantine, then you need to treat the illness and restart the quarantine period. Talk about a breakdown bummer, dude. There's also another reason why you don't add new fish to a tank with other fish in it already. And that's because they've been stressed from the journey. So what do you think adding them to a bunch of other fish who already own the property in the tank? I'm talking about you cichlids. They are going to get picked on, which is just gonna to add to their stress. Quarantining them will keep your current tank occupants safe from contamination and keep your newbies from getting massacred while they're weaker. 
Adding fish to the tank without acclimating them first can put an enormous amount of stress on your fish. Quick changes in water temperature are terrible for them, and even if the tank your new fish came from is the same temperature as yours, by the time you get them home, the water temperature is going to have dropped. You need to float the bags in the tank for about 15 minutes to get the temperature to match your aquarium water. This is what's called acclimating your fish. Two commonly used methods are the plop and drop method and drip acclimation. When the fish are traveling to your home in their little bags, there is likely going to be some ammonia produced, which is lethal for your fish as we already discussed. But the dropping temperature causes the pH to drop a little also, which makes this less toxic to your fish. Once the bag has been floating in your tank, the temperature goes up though, as well as the pH. So now when you open the bag, there's carbonic acid which is released, and this is more deadly now that the temperature and pH are up, so you don't want to have your guys floating around in this stuff for too long. That's why I just use the plop and drop method. You put a net over the bucket, drop the fish into the net, and put the fish directly into the quarantine tank, being careful not to get any of the water from your bag into the existing tank. Putting a big fish in a small tank is a bad idea. It's easy to see a beautiful fish at a pet store and get him without doing any research at all. In fact, this is probably how most new hobbyists do it. When you do this, you are neglecting the needs of your fish. They are relying on you to make sure that the environment you have created is the right environment for their needs. If you set up a cycled, nice 30 gallon aquarium and you see some cute little two inch Oscars at the pet store, you could easily think that 30 gallons is way too much for these little guys. What you don't know is that these little Oscars are going to transform into monsters over the next 12 months. Just one Oscar is going to need about 125 gallons to be comfortable in. An Oscar in a 30 gallon tank will cause so much stress that it will eventually kill your fish. Oscars aren't the only example of this. Even some smaller fish like Neon Tetras have tank size requirements. Even though they are usually less than two inches long, they still require lots of room to school back and forth in so a longer tank makes them much happier than a short one. Either get them the appropriately sized tank or rehome them to someone who can give them one. The next three reasons why fish die are very closely related to each other. They are overcrowding, the wrong tank mates, and the wrong tank conditions. Too many fish can definitely increase stress for your fish. Some fish require more room than others, and if you keep adding more and more fish, the amount of swimming room is going to be reduced. Not only that, but the more fish you have, the more food you have to feed them, and that means, you guessed it, more poop. So you have to be really on your A-game with water changes if you overcrowd your tank. As African cichlid keepers, that is a common practice, although not one that I subscribe to. Oh, and speaking of subscribing, don't forget to like and subscribe if you've enjoyed this video so far. Likewise, you may not be overcrowding, but it sure can feel like it to your fish if you keep putting the wrong tank mates in with them. For example, let's say that you work in a small office and there are four people in there including you. You all get along very nicely, it's pretty quiet during the day, you all do your own thing, and then all of a sudden, bam, they drop in a really loud guy that never stops talking. Well, this can really make the environment seem miserable to all four of you. This is the same situation with your fish. For example, if you have some nice serene angelfish in your tank, they have a nicely planted peaceful tank and every day is paradise to them. Then one day, in plops six rainbow fish. You like how they had some activity in the tank, but to those angels, these new guys look like drugged up maniacs and all they want to do is hide in a corner for their dear lives. And since they are not in their natural environment, they have no place to go in their little tank. And no matter how large your tank is, it's still little compared to their natural home. Likewise, what if you add a big wave maker to that angelfish tank and start blowing a huge current across the entire tank? They're going to get blown around like snowflakes with no place to hide. Keep their natural environment in mind when designing their tank and your fish will be much happier and live a less stressful life. Since that's one of the most fun things you can do with your fish is feed them, a lot of people tend to feed them way too much. Too much food is never a good thing for your fish. My African cichlids would beg to differ as they think they're always starving, the gluttonous fiends, but think of it this way. 
the more you feed your guys, the more, well, you know, the more stuff comes out, right? So all that extra poop is more that your beneficial bacteria are going to need to keep up with. And even if they do, then you have more nitrates to deal with, which can mean more frequent or higher quantity water changes. Higher nitrates can cause stress for your fish and it may not kill them right away, but it can reduce their immune system and one day it will catch up with them. Keeping your water quality pristine is great for your fish, so sometimes with feeding, less is more. Try to feed them only what they can eat in about one to two minutes. You can feed them once or you can do it up to three times a day in smaller amounts. Not only will it keep your water nice, but it'll keep your fish from getting on the big boned side. Another reason your fish might be getting sick or dying is because they're getting beat up. And this can be one of the most traumatic reasons for fish and fish keepers. There are lots of peaceful fish you can choose from, but sometimes you might like that fish that has a meaner, more of a Charles Manson side, like my African cichlids. But there are other types of aggressive fish, like red-tailed sharks and grommies, who like to put a hurting on other fish, unfortunate enough to be in the same tank as they are. If your fish is getting bullied, you see frayed fins, missing scales, damaged eyes, always hiding and colored down, then you need to do something about it. Your fish is highly stressed. You might see that your guy looks bullied before you go to bed, but you think, I'm dealing with that tomorrow. Well, take it from me, that bullied fish might not be alive tomorrow. You need to get either him or the bully out of the tank right away into a quarantine or hospital tank so their stress level can go down and they can heal. I add Seachem Stress Guard to the water to help the injured fish with his stress and to help him heal. As a cichlid owner, I have had more fish die because of bullying than anything else. Sometimes there are other factors involved with fish death that we have no control over at all. There are times that your fish are all completely healthy, they look fine, and they're all getting along fine. As you go to bed, you give them one last glance and admire what a great looking, well-kept tank you have. I am great! I am great! I am wonderful! You sleep with the assurance that you are the best fish keeper alive, with dreams of admirers lining up and paying to see your beautiful fish. You wake up and, of course, the first thing you do is look at your fish and one of your beauties is lying colorless and stiff on the sand. He shows no markings to indicate he was sick or bullied, and you can't believe your eyes. This is actually how I found one of my favorite African cichlids a short while ago. It's actually why I'm doing this video. You see, there are just some things that you have little or no control over. You may have bought a fish with congenital issues. Maybe his heart failed. Maybe he was just old. Maybe he was startled in the night and bonked his head on the aquarium panel so hard it killed him. That last one is what I think actually happened to Raphael, my lost cichlid. To some extent, there are things you can do to minimize the likelihood of this happening. You can buy your fish from a reputable dealer so your fish won't likely have congenital issues. Don't buy mature fish that could be at the end of their life cycle. But even so, you can lose fish when you have done everything right. All of this is great information to help you have many successful years in fish keeping. But keep in mind that this is supposed to be a fun hobby. Maybe you did everything right and still had a fish die. Or on the other hand, perhaps you were neglectful as a fish parent and your neglect caused your fish to die. If the latter is true, don't take it too hard. Use it as a learning experience to make you a better fish keeper. Or perhaps all the required work is too much for you and you realize that this is a hobby better suited for someone else. We do the best we can with what we have. If you have any stories about fish you've lost or any strategies on how you protect your fish, leave those in the comments. It'll either help someone realize they're not alone or it will help them to keep their fish alive. Maybe it'll do both. If you've enjoyed this video, check out this video where I take you through a tour of all of my aquariums and their equipment. And as always, thank you for watching. I'll catch you next time.